Good morning. My name is Father Tom Keneally, and I'm the archivist at Xavier University in Cincinnati, Ohio. Today is Friday, February the 27th, 2009, and I'm seated here in the Brueggemann Center on the Xavier campus with Dr. Robert G. Johnson. Dr. Johnson is a professor emeritus of chemistry at Xavier and has graciously agreed to be interviewed this morning for Xavier's archival collection of oral histories. And first of all, Dr. Johnson, welcome. Thank you. And Father. thank you for your willingness to share with us your memories of Xavier and your long association with it. Let me begin, if I may, at the beginning by asking some questions about your life prior to Xavier. First of all, where were you born and raised? I'm a native of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I was born and raised there. Uh, spent the first uh, 20 years or so of my life there. And uh, had some memories, uh, they're fading as, <laughs> as time goes on, uh, of a rather happy uh, life there. Yeah. Good. Uh, Tell us something about your parents and your siblings. Well, I'm an only child. So there are no siblings. Uh, my parents were both high school teachers. My mother taught English. My father taught Latin. And uh, they met uh, in Milwaukee. They taught at the same high school. Mm. And uh, so I was born and raised uh, in a house that was a block and a half away from the high school where mm -hmm. my father taught. Uh, she, my mother retired. Uh, when she was expecting me, mm -hmm. and uh, we lived a block and a half away from the high school right. where, where he taught and where I attended high school. It's interesting you wound up a chemist, but your father taught Latin. Right. Well, actually, uh, when I was young, I was going to be an archaeologist oh. because okay. we had a lot of books dealing with uh, Greece and Rome, mm -hmm. and uh, I had a pretty good collection of uh, books that related to... Uh, the ancient world, mm -hmm. but uh, when I took high school chemistry, the chemistry teacher said the right things, and mm -hmm. that's what changed the the uh, direction of my life. life really, into the, into the sciences. Right. Tell us something about your education: grade school, high school. Well, I attended a parochial uh, grade school, St. Catharines in uh, Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. I went to Washington High School, which is the school that my father, father taught, taught at, mm -hmm. then attended. Uh, Marquette University in Milwaukee mm -hmm. for four years and then went on to uh, graduate school at what was then Iowa State College is now Iowa State University. Oh, the, in Ames. In Ames, Ames Iowa. Mm -hmm. right. So mm -hmm. your undergraduate degree was in chemistry? In chemistry. Mm -hmm. And your doctorate, of course, as right. well. Mm -hmm. Was there a specialty within chemistry in, at that time? Uh, not as an undergraduate, of course, but mm -hmm. as, as a graduate student, and my major was organic chemistry. Organic. With mm -hmm. a minor, okay. in, minor in biochemistry. Mm -hmm. And where did you and your wife meet? We met here in Cincinnati, and okay, that certainly right. is one of the uh, big things that happened in my life when mm -hmm. I came to Cincinnati. After We met uh, several years after I came to Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were married. Uh, How did that come about? I think you told me the story. Of, uh, the well, we met on a blind date, <laughs> but neither one of us, we didn't have a blind date with each other. Mm -hmm. I had a blind date with a young lady that uh, another faculty member ar arranged that date. And uh, she had a blind date uh, with one of the other faculty members mm -hmm. at Xavier, a fellow bachelor mm -hmm. here at Xavier. And so that was... We went to the Xavier Homecoming. I'll say it was 1956, mm -hmm. and uh, that was when we met, and then started the date sometime thereafter. And then Jenny was from Norwood, actually. She's from Norwood. Uh -huh. yep. What was uh, Peter and Paul Church? At Saint the time? Saint Peter and Paul, uh -huh. uh, now Holy Trinity, uh -huh. at that time Saint Peter and Paul Church, and that mm -hmm. that's where we were married. There's a lot of Xavier people from that area too. Yes. Donnelly's, Larry Donnelly and his family. He lived there. right down the street from where Jenny lived. Mm -hmm. And the LaGrange's lived over there. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. And so you were married here in Cincinnati. What would that have been, about 19... 19 fi January 18th, 1958. 58. So last year you celebrated your 50th wedding right. anniversary. Well, right. congratulations Thank you. Uh, on that. And how many children and grandchildren? We have four children, 
three grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Of the four children, only one is married. Mm -hmm. And the others are over 40. They certainly don't have to ask permission to get married, <laughs> but uh, that hasn't happened hasn't as yet. of yet. Uh -huh. yeah. Do they all live here in Cincinnati? Yes, they're all mm -hmm. in Cincinnati. Good, good. So do you have the benefit of the grandchildren nearby? Well, they're in Ta Anderson Township, okay. and we live in Western Hills, oh, so I I nearby is a relative. That's uh, right, <laughs> especially you do a Cincinnati West Sider. Right. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about how you came to Xavier. How did that come about from the University of Iowa State? Well, one day uh, a fellow graduate student in chemistry walked into the lab. His name was Ray Foose, mm -hmm. a Xavier graduate. He said he had gotten a note from Father Miller, who was then chairman of the chemistry department, Father Frederick Miller, mm -hmm. to the effect that they were looking for somebody to teach organic chemistry. And he asked me if I might be interested. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, this was about the time that I was beginning to think about getting employment after graduation. And uh, actually, uh, I had had plans to already make a trip to uh, St. Louis University. So uh, the upshot is that we scheduled a, a trip to Xavier following the trip to St. Louis. Mm -hmm. A trip to St. Louis did not work out well in, in one sense. Uh, they did offer me a position, but the facilities down there were rather uh, pitiful, really. Mm. Uh, they were in the basement of the medical school building, mm. and uh, it just was not impressive mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Then when I came to Xavier, uh, the Logan building was brand new. Oh. It, it had not been used for any chemistry classes, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so it was, in my mind, a, a no-brainer when it came time to making the decision between the two. Mm -hmm. So that's right, I guess the Logan Building would have opened maybe in 53? Well, the, you came it in was 54. there. I, yes, I came in 54, and the fall of 54 was the inaugural as mm -hmm. far as the use of the labs and the classroom mm -hmm. facilities mm -hmm. for chemistry. That must have been very impressive. It uh, was. Someone have a, a building exclusively dedicated to chemistry? Yes, uh -huh. yes. yes. At that time, yes. yes. Then who hired you at that time? You, you mentioned Father Miller? Father Fred Miller mm -hmm. uh, hired me, yes. Mm -hmm. What was he like? Uh, I never met him. He was an interesting person. Uh, he, uh, he was not comfortable with large numbers of people, mm -hmm. but he was very charming on a one-to-one -one basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, he really preferred to uh, deal with people that on a way. One -to -one basis. And uh, we, uh, of course, I, my early days, why I was still single, and so I spent a lot of time in the chemistry building in the evening. Mm -hmm. And he was always to be found at his desk mm -hmm. down on Always the in his white. Uh, all in his white lab, to lab I, I coat. Heard that. Yes, yes, right. Um, and uh, he uh, was rather prominent in the affairs of the university, so he, mm -hmm. he pretty well knew what was going on in the university. He had been around quite a long time, as I read. Yeah, he came in the 1930s, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, who else was in the department at that time, the time you came? Well, uh, we had, uh, I'll try and name them in the order in which they came, mm -hmm. uh, Richard Garasha. Richard Garasha, okay. Uh, Harvey Doobie. Harvey Doobie. Uh, Joe Klingenberg. Uh, were and uh, Dick O'Neill in there somewhere. Dick O'Neill came on, quite huh? a bit later. Later, okay. Yes, mm -hmm. But when you came then, <coughs> it would have been Father Fred Miller and uh, Richard Garasha? And Harvey Doobie and, Harvey and Joe Klingenberg. Okay, at that point. Yes. yes, yes. And that would have been pretty much the staff at that time. What was Xavier like? What, what were your first impressions of Xavier? Well, of course, it, it was obvious to me that it was a very compact campus. Mm -hmm. But then again, I, I, I came from uh, a state university which had a rather uh, large campus, mm -hmm. a good number of acres there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it was a, a bit of a shock uh, seeing how uh, 
uh, small it was, but it, it never really affected me as far as making the decision to come to Xavier. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my focus was, was the chemistry department, right. and mm -hmm. uh, we had new facilities, much, much nicer than Iowa State, or much, and certainly yeah. much nicer than St. Louis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was very attractive to you. Yeah. What uh, were the challenges of the university in those days, uh, Bob? Um. Well, as best I can remember, uh, we always had some concern in our department about the number of chemistry majors. Mm -hmm. uh, in the immediate post-war period, uh, there didn't seem to be a, a large uh, problem in attracting students, mm -hmm. even the students that wanted a career in medicine would major in chemistry mm -hmm. on their way to medical school. Mm -hmm. uh, as time went on, uh, we lost uh, those people who chose now to go to the biology department. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that was certainly mm -hmm. uh, a concern. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course the university at that point was just beginning to do some building after the lull during the Second World War. Uh, I guess chemistry building would have been one, sh followed shortly thereafter by um, the chapel and the library, Alter Hall. So it was probably a period of building, wasn't it? Yes, I think Alder Hall was, uh, well, uh, the uh, South Hall was replaced by the University Center. Mm -hmm. South Hall was a, a barracks building, wasn't it? Right. Just as corner. you just as you entered on uh, the uh, drive mm -hmm. off uh, Dana Avenue, mm -hmm. and then there was a companion prefab building across from the Logan Building, which was North Hall. North Hall, mm -hmm. and North Hall actually was where many of the chemistry faculty had offices mm -hmm. at the time I interviewed. Mm -hmm. And those were really just barracks, weren't they? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And there were other barracks around where students lived, uh, or was were those torn down by the time you came? Were Alter Hall and the library presently are, there were barracks. Where there were barracks were. there, but they were used by faculty. Okay. Those were faculty offices, mm -hmm. as I recall. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they, that's right, they were torn down when the Alder building was What were the students up. like in those days? Well, uh, it was an interesting mix. Uh, we had the older students who uh, came from uh, service in the Korean War and uh, some from uh, World War II. And then we had the new fresh apple cheek fresh males, of course, at that time, yeah. uh, who had just uh, come from high school. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was an interesting mix. Mm -hmm. um, the older ones, of course, especially the veterans, were used, uh, used to deferring to senior officers mm -hmm. and the Young students were properly intimidated <laughs> by the fact that uh, a faculty member was in front of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it uh, was a very controlled sort of environment mm -hmm. at, at those times. And which, of course, changed a great deal with the uh, upheavals of the late 60s and early 70s. Did that affect the chemistry department in those days of the anti-war protests and the hippies and so forth? Well, the only effect that I recall uh, was uh, I was chairman at the time, mm -hmm. chairman of the department, and I remember writing letters to draft boards mm -hmm. on behalf of our graduate students who uh, we relied on uh, rather heavily to uh, teach our labs mm -hmm. and uh, seeking to get them uh, deferments mm -hmm. so that they could complete their service to the department mm -hmm. and that would have created a major problem for us yeah. had we lost many of them some some uh, we did lose mm -hmm. my letters didn't convince all the draft yeah, boards mm -hmm. uh, to uh, defer these people but uh, that that was a very uh, significant impact on, on us or could have been, been potentially much yeah. more yeah. serious. Than it well, I was. suppose in those earlier days too, there were things that probably have been dropped along the way, like saying prayer before class. Did, would you have done that regularly? Yes, when I when I came, uh, of course, you had a crucifix on the wall in mm -hmm. the front of the room, 
And we always uh, opened the class with a prayer. I forget whether it was an Our Father or Hail Mary, but mm -hmm. I remember there was a prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that continued for a number of years. It finally got to the point that Richard Garasha and I were the only two doing it. Mm. I suspect I probably uh, stopped doing it before he did. He was a very religious man, and I mm -hmm. imagine he, he mm -hmm. continued. Mm -hmm. Right on there. Everybody holds Richard Garasha in great benediction. I remember when I came to Xavier, it was just very clear he was highly esteemed. What was his secret of success? What, what, what was it about it that people admired so much about him? Well, he was a very quiet individual. He, he certainly didn't uh, trumpet his accomplishments in, in chemistry. Uh, I must say that he, he never had an ill word to say about anybody. Mm -hmm. Even at times when he himself had been sort of uh, the victim of uh, things, why he, he was very forgiving, mm -hmm. very understanding, and very student-centered. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I can remember uh, having a debate with him on grading policies, mm. and uh, occasionally uh, one had to call them the way he saw it, and mm -hmm. a student got a 30 on an exam, at least in my way of thinking it, why you, you put the 30 on, mm -hmm. and uh, Richard marked that 50 minus. Mm -hmm. His lowest grade was 50 minus. minus. Mm -hmm. And uh, who's to say which one of us yeah. w made the right decision? <laughs> but I, I know that, that that was one of the few things on which we, we differed. By and large, we, uh, in terms of academics, uh, we pretty much mm -hmm. uh, felt the same way. Well, he was that. certainly very highly admired. Who were the administrators in those days? When you first came, who was president? Uh, Father McGuire mm -hmm. was president. What was he like? Uh, I never really got to know him because after a year, he moved on. I believe okay. he went to Loyola. He did, that's right. And James uh, McGuire. Yes. And uh, Father Paul L. Connor was dean when I came, mm -hmm. and after a year, he became president. Mm -hmm. So I knew Father O'Connor much better than, I never really had a chance to uh, mm -hmm. get to know Father McGuire. Mm -hmm. When did you become a chairman of the department then, uh, Bob? Because you were chair at least twice, weren't you? <laughs> yes, uh, well, after uh, Father Miller was moved to John Carroll, mm -hmm. and that would have been in the early 60s, mm -hmm. uh, Richard Garasha became chairman. And he was chairman up to uh, maybe 1970 or the late mm -hmm. 60s, and then I followed mm -hmm. him as chairman. Mm -hmm. I think you might have become chair the first time in 66. Does that sound right? At least that's what I found. Uh, I, I thought it might have been earlier than yeah. that. But, uh -huh. uh, but a good nine years, you were then chairman. Yeah, I was chairman nine, nine years, years mm -hmm. and then uh, later on, uh, I believe Harvey Doovey followed me. Mm -hmm. Later on, Dick O'Neill became chairman, mm -hmm. and uh, after a number of years, he wanted to give up the job, and at that point, I came back in for a few years. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you were chair, a number of things occurred. I think that's when you introduced a new program in chemical science, didn't you? Wasn't that why you were chair the first time? Uh, my memory fails on, uh -huh. on the timing of that, but we did introduce a program that was a bit less demanding in terms of the number of chemistry courses mm -hmm. uh, and which allowed a student to take other courses in sciences mm -hmm. besides chemistry. Mm -hmm. And we thought that that would have a, an appeal to those people who uh, were perhaps intimidated by the 44 the hours regular, or so yeah. of chemistry that mm -hmm. they had to take for the Mm -hmm. a bachelor's degree in chemistry. Mm -hmm. Now, also during that time, you introduced the alumni newsletter also, didn't you? Yes, uh, at some point. This would be for the uh, graduates in chemistry and chemical right, science. Right, right. Mm -hmm. at, at some point along the way, I was persuaded, and it, it was not a difficult job to persuade <laughs> me to do that, to put out a publication uh, really for the benefit of, of our alumni. Mm -hmm. And uh, I enjoyed 
being an amateur journalist mm -hmm. for uh, quite a few years. Mm -hmm. And it, it, uh, it was rather popular. I, I, I know that a number of people have talked about that. Because you did some research. You, you went out of your way to... Uh, yes, I, I enjoyed that mm -hmm. uh, rather than simply recounting the exploits of our former students, uh, I got into the history of the university, mm -hmm. and so I did a, a series on uh, the first chemistry teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you recall I That's asked you to help in translating, translating. That's right. some information that came from France mm -hmm. uh, about this. Going back to the 19th century. Yes. Uh, and um, so, uh, yes, there were features. And then I, I did a feature on the history of the... Uh, Logan Building itself, mm -hmm. on the cash room, mm -hmm. and uh, which was in the uh, Logan Building. Which on the in first the floor. Logan Building, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, those were. And uh, at some point, the department decided to do away with the graduate program. Uh, how did that come up? The graduate program in chemistry. Yes. How did that come about? Yes, that that was a, a difficult decision, and uh, that was one of the things that Richard Garacha really mm. felt very unhappy about. Mm -hmm. I, I think, and so did I, <coughs> but I, I think it was just facing up to the reality of the situation that mm -hmm. uh, we simply couldn't compete with uh, students who were prepared for graduate work mm -hmm. in chemistry, mm -hmm. compete with other institutions that had uh, more resources, mm -hmm. able to offer them uh, a greater stipend mm -hmm. and so forth. So it was with considerable uh, Regret. feeling of loss. Mm -hmm. that we, th this was at the time that Dick O'Neill was chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that decision yes. uh, was made. Yeah, and I, I do remember that was rather painful for, for a number of people yes. involved. In your years, you served <coughs> on a number of committees. Uh, the athletic board, did, weren't you? Yes, that was one of, uh, of that, was, that was rather <laughs> interesting. To, uh, there had to be a, a faculty representative on uh, the athletic all right. board. Okay. And uh, it certainly provided uh, some sort of insight as to the problems uh, that, that they had to deal with and mm -hmm. considerations that, that were important to mm -hmm. them, and which uh, normally one would not know about. Mm -hmm. Would you have been involved in the decision to eliminate football? Or would that have come after your time on the athletic board? Because uh, that was certainly a very controversial yes, moment. Yes, yes. Uh, that was at the time that Father Curry, I believe, was, mm -hmm. was president. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't involved in the decision, mm -hmm. but I certainly was aware of what was going, going on. on yes. Actually, uh, I suppose my greatest contribution there was I was involved in the hiring of Pete Gillen oh, as okay. the basketball coach. Uh -huh. I was on the first uh, screening committee. Mm -hmm. I was not in the decision-making process, but I remember speaking up on his behalf after mm -hmm. he came for his interview, yeah. and he had a very impressive interview. And, mm -hmm. and that was really the, the time when we began to turn our basketball program around. Right, because right. Pete Gillen is a, is a big name there. Right. Did you ever serve on the faculty committee? Yes, I served on the faculty committee, I believe, several, several times. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that was interesting, mm -hmm. uh, certainly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you served on the faculty committee, uh, at least on one occasion, I know, Bob. Yes. Now, those were interesting days, and, and reflecting on the, what were then the major problems, uh, it, it, uh, it seems like... Uh, they shouldn't ever be a problem, but mm -hmm. we were concerned about things like mail delivery, mm -hmm. uh, telephone calls coming into the university, yeah. and uh, matters like that. I recently found a copy of a questionnaire that we sent around to the faculty asking them to comment on the telephone service. Uh -huh. service. Uh -huh. And uh, we, we didn't have private lines or anything like mm -hmm. that, and uh, there was a problem with the switchboard. All right, uh -huh. And uh, so we, we were concerned about things that seemed sort of petty at this point, but, but seemed they were very important at the time. Seemed very important to us yeah. at the time. Yes. And of course, you served for many years on the pre-medical committee, too. 
Yes. Writing uh, letters of recommendation right. for students who wanted into dent mental school or dental school, and medical med school. Yes. 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 And that was a very time consuming job. It, it, yes. Having that, served on that committee myself. Yes, it, it, it was time consuming. You you know, we engaged in, in mock interviews mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that these students could get some idea of what they would have to go through. Mm -hmm. And uh, we sort of put them through their paces mm -hmm. uh, at that time. But then we did look at their bio, uh, biographical information and mm -hmm. construct a, mm -hmm. a letter of recommendation. But it was all very important because getting people into professional schools like medical schools was very important for Xavier. And its yes, reputation. and, and uh, our percentage uh, of successful applicants and was high was then, high. and, and, and is high now, as right. I understand. And were you involved in the um, re renovation or revision of the core curriculum, the years 67 through 69? I know that with that period, there was a special task force that restructured the core curriculum. Did you get involved in those discussions at all? Yes, we had an input. Uh, as far as uh, the uh, positioning of science in the uh, core curriculum. There was a mm -hmm. science module mm -hmm. and uh, we were, I remember arguing rather strongly that uh, chemistry should uh, be there and, and that was a battle that we won. We also had uh, a different feeling about the inclusion of uh, experimental psychology that was a battle we lost. <laughs> well, you took on a formidable opponent. Yes, yes. Uh, Vidas Bilyauskas was a formidable opponent mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. and I, I have discovered copies of letters that I wrote to him and to mm -hmm. the uh, chairman of the committee uh, on that subject. Well, there would have been no doubt that psychology was a social science and a science in that sense. That was our argument. Mm -hmm. But that, what was his argument? Their argument more than that? was the experimental psychology had methodology that was more akin to the natural sciences. sciences. Okay. And therefore belonged in the natural science module. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that debate. Did you serve on other committees over the years, uh, presidential mm -hmm. searches or anything like that? As a matter of fact, I was on the search committee uh, we hired Father uh, Diulio as president. Oh, yes. okay. I was, flew up to Milwaukee and spoke to a former friend at the uh, faculty at Marquette to get a mm -hmm. feeling about Father Diulio. Mm -hmm. And um, so that, that, that certainly was a unique sort mm -hmm. of experience. Oh, yes. Yeah. And his presidency uh, was a short one, about four years ago. Right. About four years he was president here. And I know at the time very, we were very disappointed that he left. Uh, was that your impression that his was a successful presidency? Well, uh, selfishly, uh, during his presidency, they did re do some remodeling in the chemistry building. Mm -hmm. So we, we profited mm -hmm. in, in that way. Uh, I know, along with others, I was rather disappointed that he left, mm -hmm. we thought, prematurely. Mm -hmm. But he left to become president at your alma mater, right. Marquette. Right. Uh -huh. And that, right. that's where he went. And then Father Hoff came in at that point. But what do you regard as your most significant contributions to Xavier? You're here almost 40 years. What would you single out as the things that you did that make Xavier a better place? Well, I, I believe they pretty much centered around my work in, in the chemistry department. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't regard my contributions outside of that uh, to be all significant, unless we talk about the Pete Gillen story again. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but I, I remember uh, being a strong proponent for the uh, getting the chemistry department on the American Chemical Society list of approved departments. Mm, okay. They never wanted the term accreditation used in connection with that, but that is probably yeah, a, yes. a good approximation to the process. Mm -hmm. And I felt strongly that the university had to be able to say mm -hmm. that its chemistry department had had its program approved by mm -hmm. the American Chemical Society. Mm -hmm. What did that entail, Bob? 
Well, it entailed uh, a detailed examination of what our program was, uh, mm -hmm. the number of graduates and so forth. I remember Father Miller uh, had to, I believe, make a trip to Boston okay. in order to appear before uh, the committee that uh, made mm -hmm. that decision. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, I thought, was a giant step mm -hmm. as far as the department was. <coughs> Would that have been in the 50s or maybe uh, early 60s? Uh, he was still chair at the time, I Yes, think I, I think Father Miller left uh, in the early 60s, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, th this perhaps was uh, about 1960. 60, yeah. But I would suspect the uh, achievement you're proudest of is your teaching. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you teach over the years? Well, when I came, Everybody had to teach a section of general chemistry. The introductory freshman, freshman. freshman mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. And so I had one of those. But my feeling, my specialty was organic chemistry. And actually, the uh, gentleman that I replaced, Jack Nobis, had taught organic chemistry. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, he was also an Iowa State graduate. Interesting. So uh, I took over things that he had taught. Mm -hmm. And uh, I taught the chemistry majors. Father Miller was teaching the pre-med students. Mm -hmm. And uh, Vic Rasha, of course, was also teaching organic chemistry. Mm -hmm. So, and at one point you taught some biochemistry as well, yes. didn't you? Yes, I remember. Since I was the only one who had really had any formal training Anyone? in biochemistry, that, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. was my course, too. Looking at the broader picture, who would you single out as the individuals who contributed most to Xavier's development in your years here? What individuals stand out as important in Xavier's growth? Well, I, I think there's no question but what Tom Hailstone's uh, in the area of business and Ray McCoy in terms of the education program were the two giants mm -hmm. uh, among the laymen that uh, mm -hmm. were here at the time. Mm -hmm. Thomas Hailstones, of course, founded the business right. school. And Raymond McCoy, was he chair? He was both chair of education, I think, at one point, and also dean. Dean of, dean of the graduate, graduate school. school. Yes, right. yes. And they really carried the water uh, right. there for a period no, of no time. No question about it. Yes, yes. Some of the presidents, we talked about Father DiUlio. Father Paul O'Connor, what was he like? Oh, he was a charmer. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody you met in Cincinnati, especially in the business community, would have met him and been very much enthralled by that mm -hmm. conversation mm -hmm. because he was a very uh, amiable, very engaging mm -hmm. sort of individual. Mm -hmm. he, he, uh, he did a great deal for the university. Uh, and sometimes referred to as the great builder. A uh, number of buildings went up right. during his, uh, his right. tenure. Right. Yes. And, um, and then his right-hand man for many years was Father Nieport. Father Victor Nieport. Yes. What was he like? What was... Well, uh, his personality was quite different. He was mm -hmm. much more subdued uh, and, of, and, of course, wasn't a public figure that Father O'Connor was. Father O'Connor represented the university. Mm -hmm. Father Nieport was... Uh, in the background. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, when it came time for contracts to be renewed, we dealt with Father Nieport. I see. He, okay. he dealt with the business side of mm -hmm. uh, the negotiations. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and also really kind of supervised the buildings that went up in those days as well, didn't he? I think yes, he, he, big he was involved, yeah. especially with the University Center, mm -hmm. which is on the mm -hmm. site of what is now Gallagher mm -hmm. Hall. Would you have had dealings with people like Father Hetherington, Father uh, Pete Bushman, Joe Peters? Well, in the, each one in a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, Father Hetherington was a bridge player. Oh, I and didn't, I we would that. have a noontime bridge game in the faculty lounge. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he, he was a very good bridge player. Mm -hmm. And so. That was my, and, and of course, mm -hmm. the fact that my father had been in classics sort of uh, oh, yes. tipped me toward wanting to get to know him. And then I knew people like Paul Harkins mm -hmm. in, in oh, the yes. uh, classics, classics department. Mm -hmm. 
And, and Xavier was a small school at that time. Uh, you, you knew people from all departments. You associated with them uh, socially, mm -hmm. if not professionally. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, it was easy to... Uh, would you have any had dealings with other Pete Bushman, a man I always admired? Well, he was involved with um, admissions mm -hmm. office, and of course we were always concerned about admissions and mm -hmm. how many people would come in declaring an intent to major mm -hmm. in chemistry and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I dealt with them certainly in, in, in that in, in that terms regard. Of and of course, Father. Uh, Joe Peters, he was a fellow scientist. And, and a competitor in this sense. There <laughs> was a strong competition uh, between chemistry and biology for the uh, incoming students. And uh, we recognized that many of these people had their minds made up that they wanted to go to medical school, but we still wanted a crack at getting mm -hmm. them to take as much chemistry <laughs> as, as possible. Mm -hmm. And so there was sort of a friendly rivalry. Rivalry. Yeah. Father Joe Peters, of course, taught biology and right. was chairman of the department also for many years. Right, right. As, a, as you look back, what were the most significant things that happened at Xavier uh, in the uh, almost 40 years that you were with us? What events would you single out? Well, the expansion of the physical facilities mm -hmm. is, is perhaps the most obvious. obvious. Mm -hmm. Uh, certainly things had changed greatly. When I, when I came, uh, we still had the uh, old red building uh, oh. across uh, where the education department now is mm -hmm. uh, on Winding Way. And that was the old... Avondale Athletic Club. Uh, yes, the, build, the only building, I guess, that was on the premises when the Jesuits bought it in 1911. Right, I think yes, and okay. the cap the cafeteria was there, and yeah. so we would go over there for lunch, mm -hmm. and then of course we had the barracks, uh, North Hall and South Hall, and uh, Alumni Science Hall, mm -hmm. and Schmidt Building, Hinkle Hall, mm -hmm. uh, Albers Building, those the front row buildings, mm -hmm. and then of course the new Logan Building, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that comprised the buildings on campus. I'm sure going co-ed in 69 is an event that most every would stick out in everybody's mind as, as is most important in the university's history. Was there controversy that surrounded that? Or did that go fairly smoothly? I heard of individuals who didn't favor this, but I, I don't recall uh, any, any group Mm -hmm. reaction to it. I think it was more individuals who, mm -hmm. who regretted the, the change in the nature of the student body. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think it was a big issue. And I, I, I think most people recognized that from an economic standpoint mm -hmm. it was a rather important mm -hmm. thing for the university. To do, yes. yes. How would you compare Xavier today with the Xavier you knew in 54? Well, again, the dimensions of the, of the campus, mm -hmm. uh, the number of programs. Uh, we're offering programs in areas that uh, weren't at all represented uh, at the university at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Of course, the acquisition of uh, Edgecliff right. helped in that regard. What departments did we inherit through uh, Edgecliff? Edgecliff was about 1980. Well, art uh, was was one of them. Art, yes, that's right. Uh, I think we had a theater department too, yes, briefly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, nursing. Nursing. Mm -hmm. nursing mm -hmm. That was Which helped your department. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Criminal justice was in there, or did we, was there a I criminal justice? I have a feeling that we may have had that, but mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. But certainly the university, both physically and in its programs, has, has developed a great deal. As you look back, what were your fondest memories of Xavier? Well, apart from the fact that it brought me to a community where I could meet my wife, mm -hmm. well, that has to be that has to be up near the top of the list. Right, right. You better say that, uh, especially <laughs> if this is going to be part of the permanent <laughs> record. Uh, but uh, I think the associations with the faculty, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, to the extent people were still around, we 
my wife and I still enjoy socializing with people from many other departments on mm -hmm. campus. Mm -hmm. But we, we had a camaraderie there that uh, I'm not sure it, it exists anymore simply because of the growth of the university. Mm -hmm. But uh, And I'm sure the religious affiliation of the school meant a great deal to yes, you. Yes, uh, it I'm did. sure I, that's I, I, I one reason why you came here in the first place. I had made up my mind that at some point along the line that I wish to teach at a, a Catholic university. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that I uh, determined that it had to be a Jesuit university, mm -hmm. but uh, a Catholic university. was one that you were looking for. As you look back, are there any regrets? Are there any unfulfilled dreams? Well, I, I think I... I could have been much more efficient in the use of my time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that I got distracted uh, by other activities, which I don't really regret, but it did uh, keep me from perhaps uh, doing as much in the areas of research and publication mm -hmm. that I might have done. Mm -hmm. But uh, as our children uh, reached grade school, I became more involved with activities involving them. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever shortchanged Xavier in terms of my teaching, but I think probably my professional development uh, suffered a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, in your defense, too, you were chair for many years, and that's always a demanding position, attending additional meetings and so yeah, forth, yeah. But, uh, that sort of thing. What year, in what year did you retire then? I retired from full-time teaching in 1993, but continued to teach summer school mm -hmm. for four or five years after that. After mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what have you been doing with yourself in retirement? Well, I certainly can speak to the truth of the statement that uh, one can be much busier in retirement <laughs> than prior to retirement. Uh, since retirement, I've been involved with... Uh, St. Vincent de Paul Society in our parish. Mm -hmm. I'm now treasurer, and I do the client visits, home oh visits. Yes. And that it has, it's, it's been both a delight and, and a bit of a chore at times. Mm -hmm. And a revelation, too, I'm sure. Uh, yes, on occasion. It, it certainly yeah. uh, has been that. And then I've been doing some editing for a number of years, and this actually started before retirement. Uh, involved in uh, proofreading, writing copy, and generally uh, doing a variety of things in connection with the uh, publication of a chemistry textbook. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, I started when it was in mm -hmm. its fifth edition, and we're now going into the tenth edition. Mm -hmm. And there's still work on my desk awaiting me when we finish. When you finish, that's <laughs> where you're going to go from here, yeah. back, back to your desk. Right. Yes. Bob, is there anything else that you'd like to say? Perhaps something I forgot to ask about? Um, any other thoughts about your years at Xavier or your subsequent? Well, I, I certainly never regret the choice that I made. I, yeah. I, I think on, on several grounds uh, it, it, it was, was the right choice for me to make. Mm -hmm. I just can't imagine having uh, chosen to go somewhere else. And, and again, I, I can't say enough about the uh, people that I worked with, both in the department and outside of the department. Mm -hmm. uh, those are memories that uh, mm -hmm. I will treasure, treasure all my days. Yes. Well, I think it's also universally agreed, Bob, that you certainly made more than your contribution to Xavier in Thank a lot you. of different ways. And I think everyone would agree with that. So well, can we end it on that note? That's fine. Good. Okay. Thank you. So this concludes our interview with Dr. Robert Johnson. Thank you again, Bob, for joining us this morning and for this wonderful interview. It's been both interesting and enlightening and, as far as I'm concerned, a lot of fun. My pleasure. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.